Good morning and welcome to the Disciple Factory live stream. I hope you're enjoying and having a wonderful holiday weekend celebrating the Labor Day holiday. We are out here at Evans Park in Hebron, Ohio today celebrating this wonderful sunshine, enjoying it. And it just seems appropriate to be out here today among the sunshine and clouds in God's glory and in his creation enjoying the wonderful weather we're being given this weekend. I'd like to open with some prayer requests this morning and then we'll share a yay God and we'll get into other business and then begin to share God's word today. Amen. God is good. Uh, I want to lift up uh, Angie James and her son Christian. Uh, continue to lift them in prayer please. I know they've been still having some ongoing issues so you lift them up in prayer. Also lift up my good friends, Andy and Linda Laco. Uh, Linda was diagnosed with COVID-19, and as you're aware, or may not be aware, uh, Andy had a stroke just recently, but he's recovering nice. They're both at home, uh, enjoying each other's company and being blessed uh, on the mend. Amen. Uh, yay, God, this morning. I want to uh, rejoice in the fact that my brother-in-law, Barry Noble, and his wife, who both also were diagnosed with COVID-19 just recently, uh, Barry is home from the hospital. He was released and he is slowly bouncing back, but he's recovering. Praise God. Him and Valina have both been covered in a veil of prayer. So I thank everyone that lifted them up and supported them in prayer. Amen. All righty. Let's uh, share some other business here as I look on my laptop. Uh, yes, we are open on Tuesdays at the Disciple Factory. Doors open at 6 o'clock. The only thing we ask is, is you wear your masks. And if you don't have one, we'll supply one for you. But we are open on Tuesday nights and having our Disciple Factory Outreach Ministries where we always have some music, a message, food, and fellowship. Always a good time of hanging out. If you haven't been to our Tuesday night outreach, I encourage you to check out our videos on Facebook and see the wonderful times that we have there and the testimonies that are given, the messages that are given. It's always a wonderful time of outreach, a great time to hang out and get fed for free, all for free. Amen. God is good. Uh, we would like to ask you to consider giving and supporting the Disciple Factory Outreach Ministries through donations, through tithes, through offerings and special gifts. You can mail in a check uh, made out to the Disciple Factory and mail it to 50 South 30th Street in Newark, Ohio, 43055, or come in on a Tuesday night and you can drop off your offering in the offering box at the back of the uh, Disciple Factory Cafe. Amen. Well, looks like we got an audience this morning. I got a cicada tuning in. <laughs> you gotta love it. Uh, share and support this Facebook live stream, all our live streams for that matter, Matt. Give us some emoji thumbs up, give us some heart emojis. Give us some comments in the comments below. You know, give us some feedback. Let us know what you think of these live streams. Should we continue them or not? We're going to continue them uh, as long as we have an audience. We're going to continue these live streams because I believe God's got a special word to share with you on Sunday mornings. Even though we may not be gathered together, we are gathered together virtually here, joining and sharing and digging into God's word. Amen. God is good. Uh, tell us your praise requests and your yay God so that we can celebrate with you with those yay gods and pray with you for those prayer requests and those petitions. So put them in the comments below or you can uh, instant message us on Facebook. You can also uh, text message those requests and those yay gods to us uh, to our individual phone numbers as well or, or, or let Pastor Critter or Trisha or myself know. All righty. So share those prayer requests, those yay gods. Uh, and any other questions you may have. Amen. God is good. Um, we also need some volunteers to help with cleaning the church on Monday and Tuesday mornings. Tricia and Courtney will be here at the church or there at the church. So uh, if you're interested in uh, helping out and being available to serve in that capacity, get a hold of Pastor Critter, Tricia, or myself, and we'll hook you up. But uh, Monday and Tuesday mornings at the Disciple Factory, we need you. So there's always a ministry for anyone and everyone to fulfill here at the Disciple Factory. Amen. Also, coming up on September 12th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. is the Disciple Factory Yard Sale. We didn't have Swappers Day this year, folks, but we're having a yard sale at the Disciple Factory. So come on down. We've got all kinds of stuff that's going to be sold and it's available to buy. If you want a table space to be able to sell your goods and sell your what not so you don't need no more, we're selling table space at 10 bucks a table. You can get a hold of Pastor Critter, myself, Patricia, and we'll get you hooked up and get you a table. And uh, again, that's on 
Saturday, September 12th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's next weekend, folks. Don't miss it. So if you ain't got nothing to do, come on down to Disciple Factory. I encourage you to come on down, support us, support the church, and be blessed. Amen. God is good. Let's open in prayer, and then we'll take this into God's message this morning. Amen. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. I thank you for the prayers for those that need them, Father God. I thank you for Angie and her son Christian. I thank you for Andy and Linda, Father God. I thank you for Barry and Valina that you answered prayer, that you are bringing healing, wholeness, restoration. Amen. God is good. And Lord, for all those unspoken prayers that haven't been given to us this morning yet, or that are in the comments below, Father God, we just pray for each and every one of those prayer requests. Father God, pray that you meet the needs of the body of Christ that we would have no fear of being able to come before you, Lord, and presenting our requests and uh, petitions. So we just pray that you meet the needs of the body of Christ, meet the needs of the church, and provide the finances so we can continue this wonderful ministry, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord, and I pray that you anoint the word this morning that I'm going to share, Father God, that it would go forth and that it would land on soil that is ready to receive. And we just pray that it's good soil. So we just pray that minds would be open and hearts would be uh, uh, open as well to receive this much as this morning. We ask all these things in Jesus' blessed and wonderful name. Amen. God is good. All righty. I am enjoying this sunshine. It's nice to be out of the house. Amen. God is good. And you know, it's, it's funny. It's not by circumstance or just happenstance that I happen to be out here. At this park where you can see the farm in the back in the background back here you can see the soy, soybean fields and the corn corn fields back here it's not by coincidence that I'm out here that actually is part of this message this morning as you as you're fully aware last week I shared about being grafted into the tree of life and being part of the the, the family tree of God amen and the week before that I talked about stewardship and growing where you are planted Rather you've realized it or not, we've been doing a progressive series of teachings about growing as believers in the body of Christ. I want to continue that series today by sharing something a little more down to earth. So bear with me. I got a, I'm having a hard time seeing this, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit. We're now almost at the end of summer. You know, here it is, September, and wonderful fall weather, summer weather. Well, summer's not over yet. But we're rapidly heading into fall. And this summer has really caused my mind to wander about thoughts of harvest, autumn leaves, and cooler temperatures, which may remind, gets me to be reminiscent of my past, you know. Uh, growing up as a young man, I can remember uh, how our families always planted a garden every year and how I was always looking forward to the, all the wonderful vegetables that were planted and that we'd pick throughout the year and towards the fall harvest. When I got married and met my wife, Tina, and we got our own place, I continued that practice, that tradition and st of starting a garden, planting it, planting it, planting it, sowing seed, preparing the soil, fertilizing, turning the, the soil, so on and so forth. Amen. And I continued that tradition for a long time and I always enjoyed the work that went into that it, as, as, a, as a growing up and on farms and being around farms and whatnot we knew all about planting gardens about sowing seed which the bible actually talked about that and we'll share about that here in a little bit so thinking about this continuing this tradition of planting gardens i can remember growing vegetables like sweet corn, green beans, carrots, broccoli, tomatoes, and so on and so forth. And those veggies that tended to wander and take over also like pumpkins and cucumbers, planted lots of those. Also planted some uh, fruit, which consisted of blackberry and raspberry bushes, which had lots of thorns and strawberries. And we also planted through the vine. In this case, I planted some, I can remember planting grapevines. And I can remember how for several years, it took several years of care and planning and taking care of that vine in order for it to produce finally a harvest of grapes. And we started having grapes <clears throat> for several years there. Then I can also remember planting some fruit trees. Like I, we planted an apple tree in the middle of the garden. We also planted 
some a pear tree. Uh, I think we even planted a peach tree, if memory serves correct. And that was really cool after many years of taking care of it and tending it, that they finally grew up and became to the point where they started producing fruit. And that was exciting to me because, you know, I always grew up, you know, looking forward to fall and picking apples and picking pears, uh, going out to the strawberry fields, uh, going out to the sweet corn fields, so on and so forth, and picking that fruit that we had planted, that we had planned for, that we had sowed, that we had prepped the fields for and the gardens for. Amen? Gardens are kind of like a reflection of one's life. They require spending time planning, deciding what to sow or plant and how. It requires preparing the ground. It requires sowing seed and planting. planting. Uh, it requires watering. And sometimes it requires a lot of prayer because some of us just don't have green thumbs. <clears throat> it requires watering. Uh, it requires sunshine or sunshine. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> water, feeding, fertilizer, so on and so forth. This also requires a lot of sweat and effort and hard work, sometimes long hours and also rest. It sometimes requires getting up early and toiling late into the night to avoid the heat of the day. It requires discipline to maintain that garden. Amen? It has to be protected from varmints and pests. Gardening requires proper conditions and for gardeners, it's environmental versus Christians, it's spiritual. Ultimately, we will harvest. However, along with gardens, we have weeds. When they first appear, they look and they seem harmless and innocent enough. However, they usually end up looking unattractive, destructive, and a takeaway from the aesthetics of the garden. They're invasive and they spread. They overcome and they take over if unchecked. Usually weeds grow out of control when we become negligent, negligent, and then they become even more difficult to remove. Now, let's dig a little deeper and identify what the weeds are in our own gardens. Weeds are distractions. Those things and situations and people that hold us back or hinder the harvest. Jesus spoke about gardening and planting in the book of Luke chapter 4 i'm sorry chapter 8 verses 4 through 15 so if you will grab your bible just like i have right here i've got my bible and fortunately i got plenty of good light this morning to be able to read the word so we're going to turn to luke chapter 8 verses 4 through uh 4 through 15 i stand corrected chapter 8 chapter 8 all right now, in Luke chapter 8, verse 4, starting at verse 4, it says, While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and it was trampled on. And the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock when it came up, and the plants withered, and because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, and it came up and yielded the crop a hundred times more than was sown. And when he said this, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now his disciples asked him what this parable meant. And he said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that those seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. And this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those, are, those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it. But they have no root. And they believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they will fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear but as they go on their way they are choked by life's worries riches and pleasures and they do not mature wonderful word of god there i mean right from the bible it talks about sowing and seeds and planting uh it, and you know when you when you when you read this the word here it's it's it's, it's talking about the condition of the heart 
Is the soil of our hearts ready to receive that word? Are we allow, going to allow it to grab hold and dig in its roots and produce a crop? Now, moving on a little bit further, in the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Well, so grab your Bibles, go to the book of Matthew, chapter 13, which is two books before the book of Luke. Okay, so I'm going to join with you here, get my Bible going here. I don't like to read it from the screen. I think it's more personable if we read it directly from the Word. Amen? So, just as I'm doing, I hope you join along with me. Amen? Chat, uh, Matthew, chapter 13. In verse starting at verse 24 which is the parable of the weeds <clears throat> Jesus told them another parable the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good feed, seed in his field but while everyone was sleeping his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away and when the wheat sprouted and formed heads then the weeds also appeared the owners servants came to him and said sir didn't you sow good seed in your field where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? And he said, no, because while you're pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned and then gather the wheat and bring them into my barn. All right. Alrighty, I'm going to move my word a little bit further here. So there's a couple lessons in that. First of all, we may plant a harvest and we're going to have weeds come into our lives. Rather, you know, it, rather it's our literal garden or our, our, our garden in our life, the garden of our life. You know, we're going to run into weeds, people that are going to grow up with us. And they can become a hindrance if, if unchecked, which I spoke of earlier. So, not tending to the weeds, first of all, can inhibit the growth of the intended harvest. Weeds require work. In other words, we got to uproot them, we got to yank them up, we got to pull them out, we got to get them out of that garden. Amen? You've got to pull them up out of your life. Growing fruit or vegetables requires cultivation, tending, and will yield a great harvest. And after a long growing season, it's time to harvest. Now, Let's go down a little bit further. Let's talk about the parable of the weeds and how, how Jesus explained it. He said in Matthew 13, verses 36 through 43. So this is a continuation where we left off. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. This is talking about Jesus. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And he answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the angels are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his, they, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father who has ears. Let them hear. Good word right there, folks. Jesus warned of the choking influence of the thorns and the weeds. Did you know that there's actually three kinds of pesky, prickly weeds that squeeze the life out of fruit-producing seedlings? So let's talk about that for a minute. The first weed Jesus warned of is the worries of the world, the anxieties of this age. Worry or anxiety means to be drawn in different directions or to be distracted. What distracts you? What pulls you in a direction you know is unfruitful? For me, it can be busyness, which I'm known to get very busy and let that get in the way of serving God. A full schedule of good things that crowds out the best, like time in the morning spent in prayer and the scripture. How many times have we just run out the door and said, I don't have time to pray or even to read God's word? We need to take time, folks. I can also be distracted by urgent, urgent what I think is urgent things, which can actually be put off even for a few minutes. So we all got our distractions. So that's the first weed he spoke of. 
The second weed is a deceptive weed and it's called wealth. And it takes our, over our lives and chokes out our responsiveness to God. When we're in its grip, we spend our lives playing it, spend our lives playing it safe and risking very little for Jesus Christ. Ask yourself the following question to see if it helps you measure the deceit of wealth in your life. Would you be willing to give up the safety of your job and salary and invest your life in full-time vocational ministry? If you wouldn't, if you wouldn't, then you may need to pull some weeds of deception. Now, I found that I don't have to be rich like Bill Gates or be in the Forbes 400 to be rich or de deceived. I am truly blessed with the treasures I have in heaven, those people that I've invested in, those people that I've shared the word of God in. Those are truly the riches that I long for. So I'm going to take time out of my busy day praying and digging into the word of God so that I can more effectively share the word in season and out. Amen. Now, the third weed that we find hindering fruit fullness in our lives is the desire for other things. Here we find the weed of a passionate desire or a craving. Some of these weeds are easily spotted like sexual lust, which is an addiction to por uh, an addiction to pornography or perversions. But other cravings aren't so easily identifiable such as food, clothing, jewelry, car, a job, a salary, a hobby or even sports. And you can tell how much sports plays in the lives of a lot of people, especially this year since COVID-19 pretty much put sports on the kibosh, you know. <laughs> There's a lot of people that's angry even, like right now. The fact that football, I mean, there are so many rabid fans, people that are adamant and, you know, uh, passionate. That's the word I'm looking for about their sports. And football is nonetheless, it is one of the sports that a lot of men and women truly enjoy and are passionate about sometimes but with COVID-19 sports was kiboshed all together and there's a lot of people scrambling wondering what to do now they got all kinds of free time on their hand the time that they would have spent passionately pursuing that sport or that hobby now they're having to find that passion somewhere else I say dig into the word of God and pray and spend time with your family going out and enjoying God's creation amen God is good one good way, okay, any desire, I got, got off track there, it says any desire that drives us or controls our thinking or preoccupies our minds can be a weed that hinders growth in our lives. And one good way to spot this weed is to check your conversations. What are you most excited about? What do you talk to others about? What preoccupies your thoughts daily? Is it something honorable? All right, I'm going to give you a, a simple little illustration here. We all know what a dandelion. We all know what a dandelion is. Amen. We've all seen them. We've we've all had yards and and, and gardens that are have a dandelion or two or ten or a hundred or even a thousand. <laughs> I mean, they, they're very pretty when they first come up and when they first grow. And how many of us have had one of our children come and bring us a dandelion and say, this is for you. And, and you're just, you're, you know, you, your heart melts when your children do that to you when you're, when you're growing up. You know, I can remember my own grandson, Caden, going out and picking a bunch of dandelions and then taking them in and giving them to Tina. And she showed her appreciation and love for his thoughtfulness. Again, they seem innocent enough when we first have them, when they first appear. However, not dealing with it and recognizing it for what it is, the fact that it is a, a weed can potentially yield a yard or a garden full of the weed. I'll give you an example. If you take a dandelion after it's gone its full life cycle from the time it grew up as a sprout, became a beautiful yellow flower, and then it withers, it dies, and it turns into what to call a seed head, which is that white ball of seedlings, right? And all it takes is a puff of air, and those seeds spread everywhere. On us, around us, in front of us, 
and out from us. That's the danger of a dandelion. It can spread like crazy if unchecked. So we got to root them up. We got to spray for them, uh, whatever it takes to get rid of those weeds. And that's the way it is in life. If we don't recognize the weeds in our life, they can take over if unchecked. So we need to identify those weeds and remove those distractions, those weeds in our lives. I'm going to give you another example of a dangerous weed. And if you don't think I'm serious about weeds being dangerous, this one I think many of you will identify with, and that's poison ivy. If unchecked, it can spread quickly. I can remember many a seasons, many a summers, spending time with Roundup going around the yard and spraying for poison ivy that spread along the fence lines. And, you know, it's ironic that this came up, uh, this example of this weed, uh, again, it seems innocent enough, but if, if you don't recognize it and you have a brush with it, ooh, it can have some nasty side effects or consequences. Just, just the other day, my son, uh, Jericho, who does a lot of mountain biking, he went out and he brushed up against a vine of, uh, of poison ivy, a poison ivy plant. And now he's got it all over his legs. It, 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 and, it, and just that simple little brush with poison ivy, that poison spread all over his legs. And now he's itching. His legs are irritated and inflamed with uh, from this red virus or this red poison or this poison from the, the poison ivy plant. And he is just miserable. So now he's having to use hydrocortisone and he's itching at it and everything. And it's irritating him. That's my point. Now that poison ivy is irritating him just like a dandelion when it spreads it then irritates us it doesn't make our yards look so good especially when they die and they turn into seeds heads all you see is these white little puff balls all over your beautiful yard that you mow and you just want to get rid of them amen <laughs> again side effect from those nasty little weeds you know there's a fitting verse in proverbs chapter 22 verse 5 it says thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse he who guards himself will be far from them. Also in Galatians 6, verses 7 through 10, it says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. And whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. And whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. That's, again, that's Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. God is good. You know, and it, during my life, God has been a constant in my life. He's seen me through many seasons of sowing and planting. Sometimes I've been negligent and caring for the garden that God has given me, the life that he has given me. I've complained. However, I have worked hard. I've toiled. I've swept. I've even wept at the pain, the failures, and the lack of responsibility or accountability on my part. I've also rejoiced because he has always met my needs even when we were going through years of financial drought and failure. The lack of preparation and for not being ready when the harvest came and watched as the fruit of my labor rotted in the fields. I've missed multiple opportunities to be blessed above and beyond measure because of doubt and fear and lack of confidence. But God has always seen me through. Proverbs 4 verses 20 through 27 and the NIV says this my son pay attention to what I say turn your ear to my words and do not let them out of your sight keep them within your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body and above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows from it keep your mouth free of perversity keep corrupt talk far from your lips and let your eyes look straight ahead and fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. And do not turn to the right or to the left and keep your foot from evil. Wow. Turn your ears to my words and above all else, guard your heart for everything you do. Words of wisdom directly from the Old Testament in the book of Proverbs. Gotta love the Old Testament. Uh, also... 
I hope you know, I hope you see the value in this particular scripture I just shared in Proverbs 4, chapter 20 through 27. I just shared how it's relevant in the light of how the world interrupts us and also influences us. As the saying goes, we are to be in the world, but not of the world. As it tells us in the Bible in Romans 12, too, which says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good very good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So, that being said, folks, I'm going to put my sunglasses on so I can see you a little better. You know, I hope you got something out of today's word. I hope you take the time to evaluate the gardens of your life, your walk. And is there weeds and distractions in your life? I would, I would say this. Talk to God. Take time out of your busy day. Remove that distraction, that weed in your life that's separating you from spending time with God. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in digging into the Word because it's going to edify your soul. It's going to edify your spirit. It's going to feed you. It's going to nourish you. It's going to encourage you. It's going to build you up. It's also going to draw you closer to God. Because then it's going to help your prayer life. Because then you're going to be digging in to prayer and seeking out God in all matters of your life. So that all that you plant in His name through the Holy Spirit. And that you allow God to tend to in your life. And show you the weeds that need to be removed before they root. It's going to produce a harvest that's immeasurable. Because there's coming a day where God's going to harvest everyone from this earth the question is is will you be right with god or will you have been distracted and removed from god there's too many people that's lost to the world they've allowed the weeds to overtake their life and crowd out god so i just pray that you would dig into god's word seek him out daily ask for those influences to be removed and that he would bless you and use you in a mighty way allowing the whole spirit to flow and to bless those around you. So let's close in prayer. And then we'll get about this holiday weekend. Amen. All right. Father God, I just thank you for the word today. I thank you that you give me the examples to share, Father God. I thank you for this beautiful weather. And a, a wonderful place to come. And how the word kind of ties into the environment that I'm in, Father God. I just thank you, Lord, for all that have tuned in. All the comments, all the prayer requests. The yay gods, Father God. I just thank you, Lord, that you are a blessing us father god and i pray that you bless each and every person that tuned in today that heard the message whether it's today tomorrow or next week whenever we just pray that you bless this word lord that it would land on good soil and that they would receive it and allow your word to be planted into their lives and to manifest through to become fruit that goes forth and produces send us lord i ask and pray bless us i ask and pray in your blessed name lord and i just thank you uh, for all that you're doing in this body. I pray that you bless the leadership of this body that would be able to serve you, Father, with all our heart, soul, and being, Father God, and that it would be fruitful, that we would be fruitful and just go forth in the world. So I ask all these things in Jesus' wonderful name, and I pray, amen. God is good. If you haven't already, I encourage you. Find some time to dig into prayer. Find some time to dig into God's word because it's going to help you in your garden. It's going to help you identify them weeds and remove them from your life. Amen. And then lastly, I want to say I want to bless you today. I thank you for tuning in. I, you know, I enjoy sharing the word of God. Even if it's hearing what myself by myself, I'm not. I'm here in God's presence. Amen. God is good. He's going to bless us. So get out in the great outdoors. Enjoy this wonderful weather. Go for a walk. Spend some time with your, your family. And, you know, if you don't have family, you're just by yourself. Get out and go talk with God. Go for a walk out there on them bike trails or go have a small picnic. It's a wonderful weekend, folks. So I pray that you have a blessed and wonderful holiday weekend. Go forth in the world and God bless.